Well, 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 let me introduce you to Marcion. There used to be a small little puppet-looking character with a big, huge axe in his hand and blood leaping down the axe. And he was called Marcion. Why? Because he was the butcher of the scriptures. How? Let me tell you. Good old Marcion of Sinope, he was a boat builder, made lots of money, donated lots of money to the church. His father was actually the bishop there. And so Marcion had, you know, freedom to explore various views. And all of a sudden, out of the blues, he becomes a Christian. He is influenced, but he comes up with his own form of Christianity. Uh, we've never seen it since. And uh, amen and praise the Lord. And I'll tell you why. Marcion did not like the Old Testament at all. I mean, he literally saw God as just this monster, but he just loved the New Testament, right? But uh, 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 not all of it because there's lots of the New Testament that focused lots on Judaism. He didn't like that. So the Old Testament is out and he wanted a canon of scripture. So when he had that view, his father just told him to leave the church, booted him out of his own uh, city. And so he fl went to Rome and uh, there, in Rome, good old Marcion was challenged because he wrote a book and it was called Achoo. Yeah, that kind of name, you know what I mean? The kind of name you easily forget. And, uh, oh, the Church of Rome, we're talking all the churches, excommunicated him and he was well known. Now, when did this all happen? Well, at the turn of the second century. Now, in the first century, John the Apostle was encouraged, okay? to write a memoir or a gospel, as it was later called, right? About the life of Christ to combat the heresies of his day. Now, Marcion wasn't alive at the time, but what was he combating? Well, Marcion tells us what John was combating. <laughs> it was the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Really, he does. And on top of that, or you are definitely aware that Revelation mentions the very same thing, right? Right? That's important to notice. And if you don't know your Bible, that wouldn't make any difference to you and you'd miss the jewel, right? So John the Baptist, uh, John the Apostle is combating Nicolaitans and that idea, falsely so-called, Irenaeus calls it, right? The historian of the day. Um flourished into the second century. So here, Marcion, right? He has a canon of scripture, right? And everybody's talking about him as a heretic because his ideas about the Trinity were absolutely confusing. Nobody's believed that stuff since. So why bother thinking that uh, it's important, right? The point being is Marcion was specific when he says, John definitely wrote that gospel. Matthew, same thing. Another cultish group back then, not only Marcion, was the Epionites, and they only held to the gospel of Matthew. They didn't believe the rest. Just Matthew. That's it. That's all you need. Right? Think about it for a minute. So you can be sure that Marcion, who mentions John as the author of that gospel, corroborates exactly what the church believes believed and has believed since. The majority of the scholars have always believed it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And for the majority of 2,000 years, there's no reason to reject it. And the beautiful thing about Marcion is Marcion mentions Papias. <laughs> yeah, that he wrote a five-volume set. And so Marcion, what he does is he corroborates the New Testament was written by the apostles, and he talks about Papias, placing him as a very important historical figure. Who is Papias? Well, Papias, my friend, knew the Apostle John personally. He heard the abiding voice. It's in the present tense. But when it came time to people coming to talk to him about the Apostles, whether it be Matthew or, or Andrew, and, and he places them in the right order, he wanted to hear their voice. He didn't want to read it from books. 
clearly because Second Thessalonians says what? <laughs> There's coming what? False books. So now, getting back to Papias, <laughs> yeah, he makes it very clear that the apostles definitely wrote the four Gospels. And on top of that, he was a companion to Polycarp. Polycarp was also a convert of the Apostle John, ordained at the Church of Smyrna, because history tells us when John the Apostle left Patmos, having been sent there by Dominician or uh, Nero, he fled to Ephesus, where he established the gospel there to fight against the Nicolaitans, like I said. In any case, what do we have here with Polycarp? Well, we have a convert of his, a man who lived with him, a pastor in Lyon, and he wrote a five-volume encyclopedia called Against Heresies, and he corrects Marcion and the other group Gnostics. Oof, don't even go there. That's kind of like Scientology stuff. But in any case, the point being is that he lived with him. He knew him. We get first-hand account of what Polycarp is going to tell us about John the Apostle and the Apostles and who wrote the Gospels. Really. And so Marcion, fully aware that it's John who wrote that Gospel, and it's corroborated by the Ebionites who say Matthew wrote that Gospel. And Papias clearly says, watch now, watch, Mark followed Peter. And Luke followed Paul. That's what we read in the Bible. And they give us the apostles' testimony about what they saw. They don't tell us what Jesus did. They tell us what the apostles saw. Why is that important? Well, now we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew and John know Jesus. Mark and Luke know the two leading apostles. And it's Peter and Paul. Now, we're just scratching the surface here, man. This is a seven-minute video. Can't do that. It's too long. It might put people to sleep. So what do we got? We got Jesus who knew John. John knows Papias and Polycarp. Irenaeus is a convert of Polycarp. And he brings it all together in a five-volume encyclopedia called Against Heresies. I don't see a problem here. 